Stall spins in the traffic pattern are a leading cause of fatal general aviation accidents. The one in this video occurs during the downwind turn, but these occur most often when turning from base to final, particularly when tailwinds cause the pilot to overshoot the extended runway centerline. The two control inputs that cause this accident are pulling back on the yoke during turns which causes the plane to stall, and skidding the turn which causes the plane to spin. Skidding happens when you push too hard on the rudder pedal of the low wing during a turn, or don't push hard enough on the high wing's rudder pedal while trying to exit the turn. While coordinated flight in the traffic pattern is preferred, slips are preferable to skids. Skidding stalls fall toward the low wing and quickly go inverted, while slipping stalls fall toward the high wing and only develop if pro-spin inputs are maintained. In the following video, I've deliberately recreated the control inputs that precede a base-to-final stall spin. I'll play it first at full speed and then repeat in slow motion to identify four key points. The first key point is that the nose stays way above the horizon until the stall breaks. As the airplane enters a 20 degree bank, the nose should fall slightly because lift no longer points straight at the ground. But instead, the nose remains high because I'm compensating with back pressure on the stick. In the base to final situation, pilots who pull back are trying to avoid losing altitude during their turn. The second key point is the skid. You can see the nose accelerate across the horizon line with no increase in bank angle as excessive rudder is put in. At this point, the airplane's natural overbanking tendencies kick in, causing a slight left roll, which brings us to the third point. Right aileron is then introduced to keep the plane from rolling any farther to the left. The left side aileron deflects down, increasing its angle of attack. This creates more drag on the left side, which pulls the nose even deeper into the turn and makes the skid even worse. At this point, the stall breaks and the left aileron is more stalled than the right. The plane falls to the left, momentarily goes inverted, and then spins. I allow the spin to pass through a full turn before initiating a recovery. This results in an altitude loss of 700 feet. The fourth point is that the stall occurred with 20 degrees of bank. Shallow bank turns are not a safety net against traffic pattern spins. The best way to avoid ending up in this situation is to always neutralize the elevator during turns in the pattern. The nose will drop on its own. The steeper the turn, the more it will drop, but the aircraft will not stall unless up elevator is given. For this reason, I make it a habit to always release back pressure on the stick during every turn in the traffic pattern, regardless of airspeed or bank angle. A common misconception is that bank angle increases stall speed. The correct understanding is that load factor increases stall speed. If back pressure is released and the aircraft is allowed to accelerate downward, the wing loading does not increase and the stall speed remains the same. This doesn't mean that steep turns in the pattern are good practice, though. 30 degree bank turns at each leg result in a comfortable, stabilized approach. If a tailwind on base causes an overshoot, the safest correction in most situations is to allow the overshoot to happen and re-intercept the runway center line on final. If you're already too close to the runway to pull that off safely, a go-around is always a good option. But with those footnotes in place, it's important to understand that elevator, not bank angle, is what causes stall spins in the pattern. If a high rate of turn is needed at low altitude, the recipe for pulling it off is steeper bank, coordinated rudder, and no back pressure.